Chapter 10, The Midget. It's only a baby rat, reasoned Zoe, trying to calm Tina down. She was afraid she might smack Armitage against something and hurt him. Tina started shaking her hand violently as she ran around the girls' toilets in utter panic. However, the baby rat would not let go. The goons stood as still as statues, searching their tiny brains for the appropriate response to rat attached to finger. Unsurprisingly, nothing seemed to come to mind. Hold still, said Zoe. Tina kept running around. I said, hold still. Seemingly shocked by this authoritative tone from the small ginger girl, Tina stopped moving. Carefully, as if dealing with an angry bear, Zoe took Tina's hand in hers. Come on, Armitage. Carefully, she prized the rat's sharp front teeth off the large girl's finger. There you go, said Zoe, in the manner of a dentist who had just given a child a mildly painful filling. Come on now, tut tut, it wasn't too bad. The little bit me, protested Tina, revealing herself as the likely author of the insulting message on the toilet door. The bully examined her finger, two tiny drops of blood oozing out of the tip. Tina, they are nothing more than pinpricks, replied Zoe. The two goons craned their long necks to get a closer look and nodded their heads in agreement with Zoe. This infuriated Tina and her face went fiery red like a volcano about to explode. There was an eerie silence for a moment. I'm about to die, thought Zoe. She is actually going to kill me. Then the bell rang for the end of break. Well, if you'll excuse us, said Zoe, more calmly than she felt. Armitage and I don't want to be late for our history class. Why is he called that? grunted one goon. Um, it's a long story, said Zoe, who wasn't about to tell them he was named after a toilet. Another time, perhaps. Goodbye. The three bullies were too shocked to stop her. Cupping her little friend in her hand, she strolled out of the toilets. Just clear of the door, she realised she wasn't actually breathing and that she should probably start again. Then she gave Armitage a little kiss on the head. You are my guardian angel, she whispered, before placing him carefully back in her breast pocket. Zoe suddenly realised Tina and her gang might be following her, so without looking back, she quickened her pace. The stroll became a stride, and the stride became a sprint, and before she knew it, she was sitting breathless in her history class, which was presided over by Miss Midge. As the history teacher was an exceptionally short lady, she had inevitably been given the nickname Miss Midget, or more simply, Midget. The teacher always wore knee-high leather boots with heels that made her look even shorter than she actually was. However, what Miss Midge lacked in height, she made up for in ferocity. Her teeth would not have been out of place in the mouth of a crocodile, she bared those teeth whenever a pupil displeased her, which was often. Kids didn't have to do much to infuriate her. Even an, an involuntary sneeze or a cough could result in a monstrous snarl from the terrifying but tiny teacher. You are late, growled Miss Midge. Sorry, Miss Midget, said Zoe without thinking. Oh no. There were a few chuckles from her classmates, but mainly gasps. Zoe was so used to calling the history teacher Miss Midget behind her back that she had done it to her face by mistake. What did you say? demanded Miss Midge. I said sorry, Miss Midge, spluttered Zoe. The sweat that had sprung up on her run from the girls' toilets was now teeming out of her pores. Zoe looked like she had been caught in a vicious thunderstorm. Armitage was squirming too, probably because the blazer pocket that had become his home was suddenly damp with warm sweat. It must be like a sauna in there. Surreptitiously, Zoe reached a hand up to her breast and patted gently to calm her little friend. One more piece of misconduct from you, said Miss Midge. And you will not just be out of this classroom, you will be out of the school. Zoe gulped. 
She had only just started at big school and she wasn't used to getting into trouble. She had never done anything wrong at her little school and even the thought of doing something wrong frightened her. Now, back to the lesson. Today you are going to learn about the Black Death, pronounced Miss Midge as she scrawled the words as high as she could reach on the board, which was actually the bottom. Writing on the board was a real problem for Miss Midge, in fact. Sometimes she would order a child to get down on the classroom floor on their hands and knees. The miniature teacher would then climb on top of them so she could reach high enough to wipe the board clean of the previous teacher's scribbling. For very high scribblings from very tall teachers, you simply stacked up more children. The Black Death was not on the school history syllabus, but Miss Midge taught it anyway. Legend had it that one year all of her class failed their exam because instead of teaching them about Queen Victoria, she spent a whole year relishing the gruesome details of the medieval torture of being hanged, drawn and quartered. Miss Midge would refuse to teach anything but the most grisly passages of history. Beheadings, flogging, burning at the stake. The teacher would grin and bare her crocodile teeth at the mention of anything cruel and brutal and barbaric. In fact, this term, Miss Midge had been going on non-stop about the Black Death. It was her absolute obsession. Unsurprising really, as this was one of the darkest periods in human history, when in the 14th century, 100 million people died from a terrifying infectious disease. Victims would be covered in giant boils, vomit, blood, and die. The cause they had learned in the previous lesson was nothing more than a flea bite. Boils the size of apples. Imagine that, vomiting until all that was left to sick up was your own blood. They couldn't dig the graves fast enough. Wonderful stuff. The children stared at Miss Midge, open-mouthed with terror. At that moment, the headmaster, Mr Grave, entered the classroom without knocking, his long coat flapping behind him like a cape. The naughty kids at the back of the class, who had been texting throughout the lesson, quickly hid their mobile phones under the desk. Ah, oh, Mr Grave, to what do I owe the pleasure? said Miss Midge, smiling. Is it about the talent show? Zoe had long since suspected that Miss Midge had a soft spot for the headmaster. Only that morning Zoe had passed a poster in the corridor for the end of term talent show that Miss Midge was putting on. The poster was of course placed very low down on the wall, really at knee height for most pupils. It seemed very out of character for Miss Midge to organise something so fun and Zoe wondered if she had only done it to impress the headmaster. It was well known that Mr Grave, despite his scary vampire appearance, was a great lover of school plays and the like. Good morning, Miss Midget. Uh, I mean, Miss Midge. Even Mr Grave couldn't stop himself. The history teacher's smile dropped. I am afraid it isn't about the talent show, though I am grateful to you for putting it on. Miss Midge beamed again. No, boomed Mr Grave. It's something much more serious, I'm afraid. Miss Midge's smile dropped once more. You see, said the headmaster, the caretaker has found a, a dropping in the girls' toilets.